okay uh, welcome uh, so active learning uh, or self supervised learning uh, it's a, it's a humongous topic uh, it's a very very large topic it is uh, very very active in the industry in today's date it helps you save uh, dollars it helps you save uh, time uh, probably not developer time or data scientist time to such great extent but uh, yes time overall in the organization while you are uh, labeling your data while you are uh, looking your uh, uh, you know looking over your raw data sets and trying to understand um, out of your raw data set what is it that you need to pick up uh, so that uh, you can train your models effectively and those models uh, are uh, uh, let's say optimized uh, uh, not from uh, accuracy increasing or some some uh, 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 you know point uh, but uh, from a data point of view uh, so from a data point of view they are optimized in running uh, faster in hitting the road faster so to say uh, so the pre processing and other things uh, which you end up doing uh, get reduced uh, in a time window in a cost window uh, by using self supervised learning or by using active learning now you see two things over here um, one is the logo of lightly and one is this book on the right side written by uh, robert munro Uh, robert munro monarch i am not associated with any one of them neither am i associated with the book or the writer in any manner neither am i associated with lightly uh, though i wish uh, both the things were true uh, it is not i am just uh, uh, using uh, the book and using uh, lightly as an example uh, to uh, understand and share with you the concept of active learning and self supervised uh, learning i am focusing on image processing i am focusing on images because that is my uh, uh, area of work uh, i am not uh, that keen or uh, you know that learned about uh, uh, nlp or uh, language so i will not go there so these are some links uh, i have just started populating these links first is just the active learning books i put monarch only over there who uh, human in the loop machine learning um i uh, googled some of his chapters and i took the liberty of putting some of them uh, you know as part of this ppt some extracts uh, from those chapters uh, i obviously don't have the copyright of this the book uh, and the copyright belongs to uh, uh, the author uh, so then on act active learning there is a topic uh, on github so uh, github topic is dedicated to active learning wherein you see uh, these two libraries to be uh, uh, you know uh, starred quite well and uh, to be respected so to say quite well as far as image processing is concerned so both modal and lightly and there are others also so uh, you could end up looking at some of that uh, so uh, basic concepts so it's a uh, quite an extensive book i have not been able to read through the entire book uh, i picked up few things here and there and uh, then i focused on lightly's code so conceptually um, not only this book but also you can get lot of other content on the internet you can understand as to what is happening but i am just quickly uh, quoting from this book so in chapter 3 uh, they state the most common strategy that people use to make ai smarter is for the machine learning models to tell humans when they are uncertain about a task and then ask the humans for correct feedback so this concept is uh, quite common uh, in machine learning uh the human in the loop uh, uh, you know uh, machine learning or uh, deep learning human in the loop uh, wherein you uh, tell your model that whatever results you've given me are not good enough and or uh, you know uh, you end up scoring in a certain manner that the model understands that uh, uh, this particular image or this particular video uh, is more important to me than the other ones Uh, for maybe one particular class or maybe two particular classes or multiple classes and things to that effect and this is uh, also what is being repeated uh, nowadays uh, uh, you know in the case of uh, large language models like chat gpt and all so when when open ai is uh, uh, creating that feedback loop which is coming from human beings wherein we end up giving some kind of feedback to the uh, 
uh, large language model chatbot wherein we say chat gpt you being stupid this is not okay or this is a wrong answer or i'm flagging this answer as some kind of this thing or or i go ahead and say wow this is great okay fine give me more give me more so uh, that that feedback loop is there the similar kind of feedback loop uh, is uh, you know what is the core of uh, uh, active learning or self supervised uh, uh, learning yeah so in general unlabeled data that confuses an algorithm is most valuable when it is labeled and added to the training data so um, let's consider my uh, data has absolutely no labels right now and uh, maybe they are just cat and dog pictures and uh, whenever uh, my model uh, ends up uh, giving me a wrong label for a dog when it calls the dog a cat uh, and that is actually a dog image and it's a difficult image to classify as a dog for some uh, given reason it looks like a cat or it doesn't look like a dog so this guy doesn't know any better he knows only two labels so he ends up calling it a cat if that kind of a image i were to uh, uh, give back to the model and tell him for sure that dear friend this is a dog uh, my model will become better over a period of time so that is the concept that is the core concept um so if the algorithm can already label an item with high confidence it is probably correct so which is okay so if, when it gives me a lot of dog images uh, correctly scored as dogs so that's a uh, you know on, on a confusion matrix um, uh, that's a, a, a positive uh, this thing a positive score um, so that is okay uh, that we need not bother about and if those images i i, I let's say i were to augment my data set and i were to wherever i see a clear dog image as a human being and where my algorithm also sees a clear dog image as, as the um, classifier and i keep on uh, uh, you know um, uh, augmenting those kind of images and giving it back to the classifier my classifier does not improve because those are easy uh, uh, things for it to do right it's already doing those things it's already classifying them correctly so uh, give it the tough ones and uh, so it will improve that, that is the basic concept okay um, another thing from uh, monark again uh, from the same book uh, interpreting as uncertainty in a machine learning model uncertainty sampling is a set of techniques for identifying unlabeled items that are near a decision boundary so on on, on the decision boundary uh, uh, you think of uh, you know just to uh, visualize and conceptualize Uh, you think of a support vector machine with a uh, some kind of decision boundary which is there or uh, you know some some kind of classifier with a decision boundary so whatever is closest to the decision boundary uh, are the uh, data set points which uh, your algorithm uh, will have a tough time deciding on because those are close to the decision that's why it's called the decision boundary right so whatever is close to it is difficult to classify into one class or the other or whatever is away from the decision boundary uh, is easier to classify uh okay then although it is easy to identify when a model is confident there is one result with very high confidence you may have many ways to calculate uncertainty so this uncertainty is a very uh, critical concept uh, in this entire uh, uh, uh you know uh, active learning uh, framework because uh, the mo the more you are uncertain about a particular image or more uncertain you are about a particular sample uh, that sample will add more value to your uh, uh, classifier when it is able to classify it correctly uh, when i am uncertain about something but i take the right decision and i get the right answer that means i have learned much better than uh, otherwise and your choice will depend on your use case and what is the most effective for your particular data okay now this again uh, they talk about logits in the book uh, Uh, to understand logits properly and spe specifically in the uh, context of pytorch this is one difference which i have given so maybe i'll 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 have to build on this again and maybe we can look at some of this in the code also later on okay then they talk about k means clustering uh, with cosine similarity and uh, cosine distance and all that like uh, uh, but that that then they mentioned that that doesn't necessarily work quite well for images uh, so we have to have some kind of feature dimensions uh, or uh, uh, you know uh, either embeddings or uh, some kind of uh, pca having been done on those features uh, we need to reduce those features uh, into some kind of uh, manageable notation uh, and what exactly are these features these features are embeddings that you are getting out of the images 
Uh, through uh, some of your, uh, you know, uh, deep learning frameworks, whether it's a uh, Resonate or whether it's uh, any kind of, uh, say, CNN framework or something that you can use, you, you can uh, get features and uh, embeddings out of your uh, images. So, so this is, uh, in case you've worked with the images and you've also worked with, the, uh, say, uh, language data, or uh, not sorry not only language data but uh, any kind of data look at a very basic uh, this thing uh, data set like uh, uh, you know your flowers data set the setosa uh, versicolor that you know that legacy data set that everybody keeps on talking about uh, so think about that and think about images so when we say clustering works better for text than for images also for something like uh, maybe a flowers data set clustering works better than for images uh, so uh, Again, if you come from a computer science background, you know this already. When you look at the clusters in your exam um, examples in this chapter, you could see a semantic relationship. Okay, then leave all this aside. Just just think about the, uh, the flower data set, uh, a very basic data set, and there you understand clustering because um, on various features uh, of a uh, particular flower, whether it is the uh, uh, sepal length, petal uh, width, and all all of that stuff. Uh, you can uh, cluster a particular uh, flower into you know different different clusters that that is possible or you can even classify uh, that but how will you do that with the images you cannot do that with the images right mm. uh, why you cannot do that with the images is because uh, the individual pixels are more abstracted from the content of the image so let's say uh, if i were to tell you uh, that uh, uh, you know um, just basis color or basis the pixels of the lady's skirt you classify the lady's skirt or the lady's dress uh, you cannot write in, in this image you won't be able to do that because similar uh, uh, pixels uh, with similar uh, this thing uh, uh, you know uh, color uh, spectrum you will find uh, in the text also human in the loop machine learning that that is almost same uh, to you know some of the this thing in the lady's dress so you cannot so images so what is the context of the image uh, or what is the context of the object which is seen in the image as far as uh, say uh, object detection or object classification is concerned that pixel doesn't represent much so uh, uh, off white pixel will be here in the lady's dress also it will be in her face in her hat in the text uh, it will be all over the ppt so you understand so that that is uh, not that easy to do so there are uh, different uh, other means which are uh, required yeah okay now i come to lightly and before i come to lightly let me uh, let me show you a few things here so this is lightly Okay, a um, lot of active development, uh, wonderful uh, uh, people who are doing this. Uh, he is one of the lead developers, uh, Igor and uh, Philip and yeah, and this person, Malte Ebner. Uh, so I've gone through a lot of their code. I've gone through uh, a lot of their documentation. I found this very interesting, SimCM and sim clr and uh, moco so th these are different uh, mm, uh, barlow twins they have gone into a lot of detail and implemented some of these papers uh, some of these papers uh, so one example is from uh, fair facebook ai research and uh, in this paper uh, there is a lot of pseudo code for uh, pytorch so if you uh, if you're familiar with uh, pytorch this paper will be easy for you to read and uh, understand conceptually uh, and uh, based on this paper, uh, they have gone and done this implementation. Uh, PyTorch is there, Lightning is there, Lightning Distributed is there, uh, and uh, very detailed, very, very detailed and nicely explained. So what I'll do is, uh, I have done some of this uh, earlier. I'll go through this in the code also and do a walkthrough. So that is the plan. Okay, uh, so coming to Lightly, uh, this is again from their documentation. So it says Active Lightly makes use of active learning scores to select the samples which will yield the biggest improvements of your machine learning model. So biggest improvements uh, of your machine learning model in the sense uh, it will add the most value to your machine learning model. Your machine learning model will become uh, more mature so to say and will be able to give you better classification scores. 
the scores are calculated on the fly based on the model predictions and provide the selection algorithm with feedback about the uncertainty of the model for the given sample uh, so for any given sample it will give you uh, it will give the uh, algorithm feedback about uncertainty as to how uncertain that particular model is about certain images or a certain set of images or certain sample of images maybe you got a complete data set of maybe 1000 images out of which you will randomly end up picking 100 first then the 100 next and you know some kind of uh, uh, strategy you have for uh, uh, picking those images and for each sample of say 100 it will give you uncertainty score uh, uh, this is a very very uh, broad explanation of uh, what it actually does I'll, I'll get into details uh, uh, very soon okay uh, this is that uh, I've already shown you sorry I've already shown you the uh, this is the one yeah so I have a reference of that over here and it is quite a detailed uh, paper i don't say i understand everything there but whatever they have given uh, it is worth going through and in lot of detail uh, if you want to understand how uh, active learning is working okay and uh, yeah so that's all that i have for now uh, i will i will further uh, add to this ppt and uh, we'll go through the code of this and model of course i forgot to mention model uh, Moodle is another uh, library which is part of that uh, uh, yeah which is part of this active learning uh, topic and Moodle is there and Moodle and uh, Lightly is what I have gone through the others I have not necessarily gone through but uh, I, I think this is for uh, language models uh, yeah I don't think so this is for images I don't remember but I haven't gone through others and likely is what I am depending on right now and I have done some excellent work with this I have some excellent results and I, I really like it because uh, PyTorch based detectron based uh, there's uh, not only PyTorch there is also detectron uh, as part of their code and a part of their implementations uh, so yeah I want to get into this next uh, so that's all for this video. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye.